Alrighty guys, here we are. And I'm going to get started here with just to get people, um, you know, set up with us. I was going to share with you a few of my very first punch needle projects. This was my very first one that I did mm, probably 10 years ago. It's a Teresa Kogut design and it's my black hen and it is um, a little rough <laughs> to say the least, but we've got it. I, I learned on this and I learned a lot, a lot of lessons. It's just finished very simply like a little ornament and it hangs on the my doorknob in my kitchen. This is by Little House Needleworks, also punched just uh, last week, and um, it is punched with classic color works, and it's a flat fold, so it sets like that on my desk. Um, this one I punched uh, about five years ago, and it is also a Little House Needleworks. It hangs on the wall like this, and it can be, I finished it just on a, a board with some mottled tea dyed muslin and this was my feature this spring in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine in my quarterly finishing article and it's a drum and I absolutely adore this. This is by um, Michelle Palmer and I believe that her patterns are uh, for uh, maybe the advanced puncher, but we can get up to that once we learn how to punch. So let's get started, okay? All right, so the first thing, of course, that you need is a punch needle. I have several. I use the Ultra Punch, which is my preferred punch needle. Now, you'll hear other people will say other things about some other punch needle brands and this is one I have a set of these um, and the reason I don't like these is as you can tell the barrel is very short and um, I already have hand problems and wrist problems and I when I used these it really made my my hand hurt and so therefore I don't use these, but they have these kind, and if you have this kind, it works just the same as an Ultra Punch. The only difference is, is that you put on these little black plastic spacers to determine how big your loops are going to be, and that's a little bit different and a little bit easier to navigate on the Ultra Punch. The Ultra Punch is now, uh, it used to be known as the Cameo Punch. Um, now it's under new ownership, which is the Old Tattered Flag, um, which is a rug hooking and wool and punch needle shop. They own the rights to the Ultra Punch, and they are the producing company now for them. Um, I have six of them, and probably people are, th people are thinking, why do you have six? And the reason I have six is that I load up my different colors when I'm punching alone. I won't do that tonight. But when I'm punching alone, I'll have um, my different colors on the needles and I'll have them all loaded so that I can go from one to the other in my need in with my punch needles. Okay, so when you open up your bag of punch ne uh, your bag of punch needle, your kit, you'll notice that it has three needles. Now my medium needle is already on my punch needle, um, but I am going to take this off to show you how, when you would change needles, how that's done. So on the end of your punch needle, there are three different symbols. There will be an M, an L, or an S, so small, medium, and large. If you are stitching, if you're going to punch with three to six strands, so three strands of floss or the whole floss as it, as it comes off the skein or the ball or whatever, you'll want to use the medium. If you find, here's a tip, and somebody asked me this and I didn't understand what they were saying until later on when it happened to me. If you are punching and your loops do not stay in, as long as you are making sure that you're not ha you don't have your floss caught up on something and, and it's still not holding, move up to a larger size needle. That's the key to that. So anyways, three to six strands, you want to use your medium size needle. I 
usually do all six strands so as it comes off the skein so I you leave my medium size needle tip on my ultra punch but if you were going to use yarn or a chronic or a metallic thread you would want to go up to the large you want to keep these little plastic things on the end because these guys are sharp or if you're going to use one or two strands of floss you want to use your small needle okay the you will have two springs that come in your kit there is a large spring and this large spring which is the same size on each each end um that is only to be used with the large needle okay katie said we had a question so where can you buy one of these you can buy one of these at any needle workshop uh, the shepherd's needle is where i get my punch needle supplies but I know that there's other stitch shops. Any stitch shop will should that sells punch needle designs should have a punch needle. Um, they might not have the Cameo, I mean the Ultra Punch, which is what I have. They might have these other brands, but most no, um, local needle workshops or online needle workshops have punch needles. Um, I get all my punch needles through the Shepherd's needle in little rock arkansas ann and the ladies will take care of you there i do model finishing for ann and so that's where i get my my punch needle supplies at she has an awesome awesome selection of punch needle gadgetry which we'll be going through some gadgets that i use here in a little bit and um, an awesome selection of all kinds of punch needle designers so that's where you would find your punch needle. Any, you know, any needle workshop or even I've seen them in rug hooking shops too. So any of those places you can find a punch needle. Punch needle is kind of enjoying a, uh, like all things since COVID, um, is kind of enjoying a, uh, a revolution, I guess. There's a renaissance. A lot of people are kind of learning punch needle. So um, I thought that would be a good time for us to learn together or for you all to learn or me to teach you. So on the small and medium sized needles, you will use the spring that has a graduated smaller tip and to load it into your um, shaft of your punch needle, um, you can see that there's like a little uh, T looking kind of a plus sign there you are going to put the plus sign of this needle so the end of this needle will go into the plus sign and then you just turn it and that locks it in there so it doesn't come off you'll put your needle spring with the the graduated smaller size tip at the end you want to hold that and then when you put it in gently into your punch needle you will just put it down like that and see it came off it didn't come off because we're live and so that's what happens <laughs> but you want to make sure it's through this because if it goes out like that it won't punch right so you want to load it into your your punch you want to get this little pin here to go down in this this way up and then this is how you'll want to store your punch needle these numbers are how big the loops are and um, you can figure, sometimes the patterns designers will tell you to punch it on a two or a three or whatever. I prefer a very tight, short nap to my um, punch needles. So I always stitch mine on a one. So to get it down to one, you would just get it down, you would just move the little pin down to the one. You can see that moves like that and then over to one and then there it is, okay? This still doesn't feel right, and it's, it didn't because it was out the top. You got to be careful. Sometimes that spring springs off of there, and then it comes in, and you can tell. If it doesn't, oh, there, that's right. If it, is it, if it isn't really bouncy like that, it's not in the right, it's not out the end. It's come off the side, so just an FYI. That happens to me all the time. Okay, so I store my punch needles in this little, little case. 
This is from Art Bin. I don't have, it doesn't have an identifying number or anything, but it is an Art Bin case, A-R-T-B-I-N case, and it just is a perfect size. Another thing that I used before I found this was one of those plastic pencil cases from, that you can find like at Walmart or Target. Okay, Katie says we have another question. So the next question are, is, do you have any tips on how to unjam it? You just pull it out. That's it. <laughs> you just pull it out. See, I could tell when I was push when I was pushing it in that it was it should move very easily. So when it doesn't move that way, you just bring it out again, pull it out, make sure that it's not going out the side like this. It's really is very easy to get it out the side down there because you can't see it going in. So I try to always hold mine when it's going in, and then that way it won't. And I can tell because it's easy that it won't do that. Okay. The next question is, do you know if you can order parts for your punch needle, specifically not the entire punch needle, but like the spring? Yes, I believe you can. Um, but don't quote me on that. I, I believe you can do that. I think I have seen replacement parts, replacement needles. Um, you would just have to call. That would be one of those things that you would have to call and talk to a shop and ask. Um, I'm not for completely certain. As you can see, I have six. So if one breaks, I just get the next one. But I've not had one break and mine are probably 15 to 20 years old. Or well, some, my oldest one is 15 to 20 years old. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. So that's your punch needle. That's the very most important thing to have is your punch needle. The next thing to have that's important and you need to get like these in bulk is your threaders. Okay, now your threaders will come, let me get one that's not, your threaders will come in packages like this and they just have this little white piece of paper, like a fold over sticker on it. And it's, they're, they're kind of flimsy and hard to, hard to find if you drop them and, um, you can see that's kind of flimsy and kind of hard to find. You can't really see it, see? But this is the threader. This is in, integral to doing punch needle. They come in a, in a, usually a pack of three to ten or whatever you want to purchase. You want to have extras of these on hands at all times. And then here's a trick that I do so that I don't lose my punch needles. I take old greeting cards. That's what this is, an old greeting card. I cut cut it long ways, I fold it in half, I put a little dot of glue on the end, I place this white peat tip right there on the end, I fold it over and then I put uh, tape around it to hold it. That way if it falls down in the side of my chair or falls on the floor or I throw it somewhere, I can find it because this is a big honking thing that you can find. So I always do this to my threaders so that I don't lose them because it's just really upsetting when you're in the middle of punching and you can't find your threader. So you have to have a threader and they have to be, you can see these are long, you know, so you need to have these threaders. These are ultra punch threaders. Your kit or your little baggy, baggy kit that you got with your ultra punch should have a couple of these in there. Tip, tip, tip. I can't put a star on this enough. Do this to your threaders. This really does save a lot of grief is to do this to your threaders. This is just a post-it note that I put um, put it on and then I put the packing tape around it to to give it some, you know, it's it's hard. Okay, so threaders. Need the threaders. So everybody make sure that you have your threaders. The next very thing is your Morgan lip locking hoops. Now then, you probably only have one right now but if you're planning on doing this, once we get started and if you really like it, you want to make sure that you get several different sizes because the, the design must be within the hoop. So let's say, for instance, uh, this is one of my works in progress. And let's say that all I had was this size of hoop. Well you can see I can't do very much punching with that and you don't want to lip it because it will you don't you can't move it like a hoop when you're stitching because that will flatten this nap and it will make it not good so it has to be contained within the hoop so I would have to do a hoop like this 
a, a size nine. This is a size nine because I always write what size it is. It would be to to complete this this punch needle. So I have multiple sizes um, that I that I use. So you know you need to have a hoop. Now then, some of you might have purchased a um, Morgan lip locking hoop punch stand okay so it looks like this all right this is honestly my favorite thing to use um, it I, I usually use this large size so this little size will fit on my on my lap but if that if I have a really small design then I can flip it and use the small side um, but I typically use the larger sides because these get in the way and, I, and it irritates me. So I uh, you typically use the large size on my Morgan um, lap stand. So if you have these, I have another one that I'm going to put together to show you how that goes together. It's really simple, but I thought I would show that later too. Okay, so then the next thing that I would like to bring your attention to. Okay, wait, there's a question. So you get all of your supplies from Shepherd's Needle, correct? The Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. Ann Thompson is the owner. But you can get it at, like I said, at any online or brick and mortar needle workshop. If you have one in your, in your vicinity, you can by all means go there and see if they have them. But I get all my supplies at the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. And then is there a list somewhere where you can get where you can where you have all of your supplies or is that in the instructions we on my blog I don't know if how many of you know that I also maintain a blog um, it's called the twisted stitcher because I'm the twisted stitcher and on there on my blog I have a lot of information now it was hacked and I deleted most of it last uh, summer and um, so there's, I'm rebuilding it right now, but I do in fact have a large um, listing of everything that I need for punch needle on my blog. Again, that is thetwistedstitcher.blogspot.com. And at the top of my blog, there are tabs that will say home and my welcome and, and my finishing and my YouTube channel and stuff like that, you would want to look under punch needle, of course. And there I have a listing of everything that I use for punch needle. Okay, any more questions? All right, so the next thing that I need to draw your attention to is in your ultra punch package that came with your, your punch needle, you will see this little book and it's a great book of instructions these are general instruction instructions that like after this class if you get at and you're like stuck and you forget something this is great to keep you want to keep this in your punch needle kit and um, always refer to it because it has really great information in here and it will highlight a lot of the things that I will tell you tonight so keep this this is a great book um, the other thing that I wanted to tell, talk to you about quickly is I also have a rug, uh, rug hooking frame. So it has these little grippers that you can put. This is great for really great big projects, punch needle projects. I don't use this and if it, unless it's a big, a big project. So I just wanted to tell you that you can use these. This is big as I can't get it all in one frame, so you can see it's big, but you can buy these. I bought this at a rug hooking store, but I know the tattered flag also has these type of frames, as does Lori at Not Forgot Forgotten Farm on Etsy. Her husband makes and sells punch needle frames that are um, similar to this, not this, but, but similar. So. This is another type of frame that you can get to punch in. All right, so what do we punch on? You can punch on a wide variety of things, but what is suggested always by the manufacturer and most people is to punch only on weaver's cloth. What is weaver's cloth? Weaver's cloth is a very tightly woven um, partial cotton, partial polyester woven fabric, okay? So it's so tightly woven that when your needle 
pierces through the fibers. It moves the fibers aside, and then when you pull it back up, it holds that, that floss tightly, and it won't let go. So that's what you want. If you use a quilting cotton, that fabric is 100% cotton, and the needle on the punch needle will actually pierce and break the, the weave of the fabric so therefore it won't it might hold for a short time the the loops of the punched needle piece but it won't hold it for a lifetime it'll eventually fall out so you don't want to do that yes I know that you can punch on jean fabric and flannel and a, a sundry of other things but for my purposes in teaching tonight what I do is I always punch on weaver's cloth and that's how i'm what i'm going to teach is how to punch on weaver's cloth now then let's go ahead and get started with some our loading up i'm going to go ahead and put together the morgan lap stand so if any of you got the morgan lap stand you will see that it has these little notches and that's where you simply put these and so you put them in there and what's so nice about this is that you can put it in and then you can take it apart and it's very easy, easy to transport wherever you're going so just like that one two three it's together and we are ready to punch let me get this end in and then we'll be ready okay so there we go it is on and ready to go so take let's start in let's take our pattern whatever your pattern is mine is um, American Roots by the threads that bind okay I'm going to use the large side of my hoop my, my Morgan lap stand so whatever hoop you're going to get loosen it and pull the the outer hoop off you will see that this is a lock see how there's like a little ridge in there and it will lock inside this um, right here on right there on the hoop so it will hold it very tight so I'm just going to place it on there you want it pretty much centered and kind of away from these little things okay this these little things right here you kind of want them away from that so you want it centered in between in between those and in the center of the hoop you want to put it down firmly and then you want to pull it all around the outside kind of straightening it out you want to tighten I'm going to tighten it up a little bit so I can pull harder Okay, now then I'm going to show you the first gadget, this, okay. I have hand and wrist issues from using my hands all the time, and this is the Mighty Winder, and it's actually made in Indiana, and that's where I'm from, is Indiana. I'm coming to you tonight from Bloomington, Indiana. This is made in Indiana, and this thing is a wing nut locking tightening aid so you just put it on here and you twist it I'm, I'm just telling you this is worth it costs $22 it is worth every penny that you will ever spend because this really hurts my wrist because of like I said my hand issue so I use this honest to God this is the best $22 I ever spent okay so now then Okay, we got a question. So what size are the hoops on your lap stand? These hoops are, well, they come in different sizes. Um, you can choose which size. This one's a 10 inch, and this one is probably like a, I don't know. It is a 7, well, no, it's, it's a 7 inch, and then this one is a 10 inch. Okay, so 10 and 7. Okay, yes. And then the next question is, does it matter which end of the plastic rod goes on the large or smaller hoop hole? Yeah, you can see that it's slanted. So you want the outward slant 
the outward slant in the bottom one because that's the larger one and then it will slant in and that's where the smaller one goes okay and then the next question is is your fabric upside down or is your front camera so the fabric the letters are backwards yeah because we are punching in reverse this is this is our pattern so we're going to be punt this is what the back side will be when we punch down when we get done you'll flip it and this is the side you'll see and so as you can see the abc will be right side up then okay so for instance this is the front of the of the needle point of the punch needle piece Here's the back. This is where, when I hoop it, this is how it's hooped. So this is the back, and so you punch from this side, and then when you're done, you flip it, and, and the pretty side's underneath. So you do not look, when you're punching, you're not looking at the pretty side. You're looking at the ugly side, okay? But it should be as pretty as the front side when you're punching, but we'll talk about that later. So does that answer everybody's question? Yep. Okay. All right, so you want this very, very tight. Like, we're talking drum tight so you want to go around the outer edge of your hoop and pull it very very tautly you want this really tight i cannot begin to tell you how important this step is and you want to take time with it once you get it pretty tight go ahead and I use my winder, that's why I've got this, because I, it has torque, because I can really get it tight. You want to tighten it down as best that you can, okay? Like I said, this winder is fantastic. I, 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 the trouble I had before I had this, I just can't begin to tell you. I always lay mine down flat side once I have it really tight, and I pull it again, because again, you want it as tight this is a critical step is getting it as tight as you can okay so can you hear how tight that is all right i'm going to give it a couple more twists here all right we got her tight in there it is good to go all right so kind of the questions before answered what is going to kind of talk about what I'm going to tell you next, but as you will see, everything is backwards. That's not what the, like I said before, that's not what the design will look like when we're done. When you're done, you'll flip it, and this will be the pretty side, okay? All right, so the, okay, there's a question. Have you punched using a frame with the porcupine grids on the four sides, and it's, for the same punch needle and wool hooking question Yeah, that's this one, what I showed earlier. The rug hooking one. Yes, I did. Okay? All right. I only use that on really large ones, though, because I don't... I use that for rug hooking, and then I use it for punch needle, yes. But I prefer, most of the time, the Morgan hoops, if I can get it to fit in a Morgan hoop. Some of um, the punches that I designs that I stitch, I really like, uh, oh gosh, I can't think of what her name is. I just said it earlier. Lori? No, uh, the designer of the Robin piece. Anyway, she makes very big, large, intricate punch needles, and I use the, the rug frame with hers. Okay, so it's in reverse, right? Okay, so what we do next, or what I do next, is I take my pattern, okay? And I write, in most patterns are like this, like it'll say the border, flag, pole, A, B, C, one, two, three, and the crow is DMC 310, okay? So I write, because we're not gonna see this, nobody will see this at the end, You don't. we don't care. So I write with a pen, I really use a ballpoint pen, you can use whatever makes you happy, and I'll put the border. So the border is 310. And I'm going to draw a line to it, okay? 310. Then the flagpole is 310. So I'm going to draw that 310. The ABCs is 310. And the 123 is 310. 
and the crow, where's the crow? That is 310, okay? We don't care about this outside thing. This is all just going to be a part of our finishing. So we can write right on here because it's going to be covered, all right? So the next thing, I do all of this so I can get rid of this pattern and I don't have to look at it anymore. The tree trunk is 300. The chimney is 300. Uh, the flower stem and the leaves are 300. Okay, all right, we got the flower stem and the leaves. The next ta next thing is the fence and the roof. The fence is 30, 31, so we're going to put 30, 31, and the roof is 30, 31. Okay, the sky is going to be 524 and 30 22 and that the sky is going to be all of this from the hill so it's all going to be your background you're going to blend those randomly together so when i do that i always just write it and kind of circle it the hill is going to be randomly blended together 30 11 and 30 12 okay uh, the house is 924 the windows are 924, uh, no, 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 3829. Uh, the door is 3777. The crow's wing is 327. And on, so on, and so forth, okay? So that's how I, I really do it all together. Um, I just quickly write well i don't quickly write it but i write whatever it is on the pattern so then i don't are on my actual piece so that i don't have to like always look at this pattern i can just take what my thread colors are and go with it okay all right so i do keep this close at hand because as i punch i like to look at the model picture if i want it to look just like the model i'll look at this picture i'll keep it close at hand to look at it but other than that you're done with the pattern okay all right so when we begin to punch the first thing that we need to fill in are all of these single letters all the things that are on the inside that's a single you know line that's what we fill in first okay so we're going and that's why i chose this pattern because it has a lot of single lines and that's really the toughest thing in a punch needle to get to look really really good are single line things so 310 is the abc and the one two three so let's get our 310 do i have 310 <laughs> Can you get me a 310 up yeah, there? Yeah, and while uh -huh. you're doing that, there's a question. Yeah. How do we know how many skeins to buy of each color? It should say that on your pattern. On your pattern, if it takes more, like just, just like it does on a, a, a cross stitch pattern, if it has a two by it, then that means that it should be two. You should buy two skeins. To be honest, I punch really heavy, so I get double whatever it says on the pattern if it says one skein of 310 i get two skeins because i punch really heavy and i'm going to talk about why i do that i punch really tight and um so i get double of everything but on the pattern it should say two skeins of x y and z four skeins of this it'll tell you just like on a pattern okay so how do we take care of our floss when we are punching? This is how I do it. I take my skein and a clothespin. I take the number off. I cut the number off of the piece like that. So I have my number. I put the number just like that on the end of my clothespin. And that's how I identify what DMC or what crescent colors or whatever it, it is. Of course, crescent colors won't have a nice little sleeve like the DMC does, but I, you, this is how I do my DMCs or my anchors. 
and our Sullivan's if you use Sullivan's. If I have a classic color works, what I do is I take my pencil and if it was cherry cobbler, I would write cherry cobbler on there. Okay. And then that way I know that's what it is. And then what's nice if you use pencil, then the next time you can just erase cherry cobbler and it can be used again. So for a couple bucks at Walmart, you can get yourself some wooden clothespins and use these as your floss keepers when you're punching. And I'll sh you'll find when we punch, or when I punch here in a minute, you'll see why it really does work out nicely. So all I do is put it in here and then I wind it on. Okay, Katie says we have a question. How do you transfer the pattern to the cloth if it's not a pre-printed pattern? And that's another punch needle lesson after we get, I asked everybody to get pre-printed patterns on this, at this time in the future, because I'm going to, we're, we're going to have homework this week and next week we're going to come live again and we're going to try to go through the rest of this pattern and finish it. I'm going to get you started tonight and then we're going to address how to, to transfer a pattern from like a punch needle and primitive stitcher magazine or an other book or one a pattern that doesn't come pre printed on on weaver's cloth um, at that time how it's done is you have to have a light box or you hold it up to a window but i have a way that i do it that makes it so much easier to transfer and i will discuss that at a different time right now we're just going to concentrate on um, pre-printed patterns because this is the easiest to get people started and I wanted it to be easy so that people could get the techniques down rather than trying to bring 101 things all together at one time. This is how I learned was by learning on a pre-printed pattern first. We will do the non-pre-printed -printed patterns like I said in the upcoming uh, weeks uh, and days ahead. Okay so I'm going to twist my floss on here. What I do is I just put it down to hold it so that it, the clip holds it and then I just wind it up. Okay, and I'm just going to do this one so that you can see how it works because we're just going to do a few things and then I'm going to give you your homework assignment and, and ask if there's any more questions and then we'll move on for tonight after I show you how to load and everything else. So just quickly, I'm just going to get this together. Okay, so there we go. We've got it loaded. We know that this is 310. All right, now then, the next thing is we are going to learn how to load our needle. So in this pattern, you have to look at your patterns. It will say that you will need a locking embroidery hoop, a three stand, strand punch needle, and a threader a small scissors, embroidery floss pictured with DMC. All the pile depth is punched with a number one ultra punch and three strands of embroidery floss. Okay, I'm not doing three strands of embroidery floss. I punch with six strands, predominantly all the time. I think that it looks nicer. I like the way the pile looks. This was supposed to be three strands and I punched it with six strands the whole so as it came off the skein and I think it looks great. Um, I like the way it looks. Um, so I use six strands. If you choose not to use six strands what you would do is you would cut yourself a length I would suggest a couple of yards and you would separate the strands. I have a gadget that will help you separate the strands and it's made by Puffin and Company and it is a thread separator and I'm just going to cut a small length to demonstrate. <clears throat> so if you wanted to follow the rules or follow the directions, I don't because it's just personal preference. I like the way six strands look. But let's say you want to be a rule follower, so you're going to clip one end of the strand onto your Puffin um, thread separator, okay? The top of it, you're going to pull away 
three strands on one side and three strands on the other side okay so there's three strands on this side and there's three strands on this side and how this works is is you pull it apart and as and it just separates just like this it's just separating the strands without any knots or any twisting or anything like that just seamlessly separates the strands into however many strands you want and then when you get down to the end of the roach clip it is here's three strands and here's three strands so if you're going to separate strands definitely get yourself in get yourself one of these this will save your nightmares and headaches and i just can't tell you how great this little gadget is puffin and company a thread a strand separator um, available at any local needle workshop or on like, online or brick and mortar, okay? Puffin and Company. All right, so we've got our thread on our clothespin here. And we're going to get some unraveled. And we are going to thread it. So we're going to get our threader, okay, and we're going to get our punch needle. We're going to put it down to the pile of one because that's what I like and that's what the, the uh, pattern said. If you, want it, if you want a fluffier one, then put it on two. If you want it really fluffy, put it on three, four, five, six, whatever you want. I prefer, I prefer the look of a traditional wool hooked like rug look and um, that's what this is kind of just in miniature form so i use a one pile okay so your thought would be that you're going to go down this big hole but actually you're going to go through the small needle all the way down to the end of the barrel okay so it's out here it's out here on the end okay you're going to put your strand of floss however many you're going to use one or one or three or six or however many. What size needle are you currently using? Mine is a medium because I'm using six strands. Well, this... It's hard to do it away from your body. <laughs> I can do this in like three seconds when I'm up in my chair. Okay, so you kind of want to... Separate that. Get your end of your thread in there. Okay. You want to pull it down to the end because there's a little uh, loop down there at the end of your threader that holds the thread. You're going to pull it all the way through to the end of your needle. Okay. When it comes out, you're going to take your take it off the threader, and but you're going to put the threader in this hole right here on the back there's a beveled edge and there's a hole on the back of the needle this is the back you want to put it through the hole on the back through the front where the bevel is and then you want to put your open up your threader put the thread the skein or the floss through that and then pull it through the back side of the hole okay and then take you're done with your threader okay so let's do that again I'm going to unthread it you're going to go in through the bottom of your needle all the way up through the barrel to the top okay here's the top you're going to put the thread through the threader Pull it down to the end of your wind of your threader because if not, it sometimes will get unhooked and then you have to do it all over. You're going to go all the way through the end. Pull it out the bottom like this. Once it comes out, you're going to take your threader off the end of the thread. Then you're going to go from the back side of the needle, which is the beveled, the back side of the beveled edge. The beveled edge is the front. The, there's a hole on the back side. You're going to put the put it through the back side to the front. Then you're going to put the thread through that needle threader and pull it out the back side. And there is your threaded ultra punch. Okay. All right. So 
we've got a threaded ultra punch all right the next thing is we're going to pull you don't need all this out the ed, out the back you just want to pull this through from the from the end you want to pull it through until you have about one to two inches of thread on the end of your needle out the back of the hole okay so you can see there's the beveled edge and it's out the back okay it's out the back all right okay so let's take a few practice punches when you're punching you don't want to have your arm you don't want to have your thread hooked up on the screw or the side of the frame you want to have like some on the top I always put some of mine on the top you want a lot of it pulled off your your uh, your clothespin or whatever you're you've wrapped your floss on I like to have a big long loose bunch so it's not I'm not you know holding it getting it caught on anything to punch you're going to punch perpendicular perpendicular to the fabric you can go one of two ways in your directions it will say that you always lead with the beveled edge okay so you always want to lead away from the from the back side of the needle you can go front and you're just going to hold it perpendicular to the cloth and then you're going to go all the way through until you hit it the hit the the top of the the needle right there and then you're going to pull out and you're not going to pull it all the way out you're just going to pull it until the tip of the bevel is just right at the edge of the fabric and you're going to drag it just like maybe three threads and then go back back down again now then you don't have to count the threads i'm just saying you don't want to move it very much so you're going to go up drag it across a couple of threads down up down up down up down now then when you're doing it you want to go straight you don't want to have like an up and then over here down and then a down like this and all. you don't want that because it won't look on, good on the front when you're done you want to go in straight even lines and then turn now then when you make a mistake you just pull it out just like what I did if you pull it all the way up when you're punching just stop put the needle back down at the surface okay so let's let me do that you can be you'll be punching 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 and then you you punch and you pull it up and it's like oh no see I've got all that extra don't worry put it right where you want to go down pull up the extra with with the back pull it th through the end here and then go down again and you've and you fixed your problem okay now see I got stuck on my nut here and then that's not good okay so you can lead with your again we're going to lead with our beveled edge up drag it across the tip of the needle across two or three threads down up to drag it down up drag it down up drag it down up drag it down okay so that's how you want your stitches to look you want them close together you want them uniform and you want them right in a line just like that okay when you want to end you just put your your fingernail right there you pull straight up and you clip and that's it and then you would clip your end to keep it neat okay all right so i'm going to pull this out all right so let's do the next thing that was leading with the beveled edge that you can do it that way or you can do it this way side to side of the beveled edge either right or left so that would mean going off here's the beveled edge okay there's the beveled edge you could punch this way or you could punch this way however you however you would want to do it so you can go like this and when you do it that way it would be the same thing down drag it a couple down drag it a couple down I actually kind of prefer punching side to side like this because I feel like I have better control than when it when I lead with the beveled edge um, you just want to kind of play with it to get how you, what's most comfortable for you but you can see that those those are nice straight stitches and that's leading that's going side the beveled edge is on the is right here and I'm coming off the side like you, that I don't know if I can or not I can try let's see we're going to try to do a side view now, see if that will work. Let's see. 
now the okay so let's see no that's going to be because i'm right-handed so it's going to have to be on the left. sorry people hang with us this is a new camera that i bought and i'm not 100 percent know how to do stuff okay so let's see okay so let's go ahead and since people didn't i just didn't see what i was doing right so i'm going to pull it off okay so i'm leading this is the beveled edge okay yeah. and the beveled edge is in front of the hole correct the hole is on the back of the, the hole edge. is on the back so it's coming off the back let me get the it's hard to, to show when it's so small this is the beveled edge okay so this is the beveled edge this is what it looks like from the side okay so you will lead with the beveled edge the threads coming out the back where the hole is it's a straight it's straight and it's flat and the beveled edge is on the front okay so you either lead with the beveled edge or you go side to side so i'm going to punch now leading with the beveled edge okay that was the first thing that I did a while ago. So I'm going to go down, drag down, drag down, drag down, drag down. You want it tight, only like two or three threads of the, okay? So can you see that? Did everybody see that better? So that was leading with the beveled edge. When I want to stop, I'm going to put my finger there and I'm going to pull straight up and I'm going to cut it. Okay? All right. So let's say that we want, you can do it that way, leading with the beveled edge, or you can do it side to side. So here's the beveled edge right here, and you can come off and, and lead on the side to the left. Or you can lead to the side on the right, okay? The thread's back here in the back, okay? All right, so I'm going to put it down. Here's the beveled edges point. I'm back here, so I'm this, I'm this way, okay? And I'm, the be beveled edge is facing me. And I'm going to go side. Same way, down, slide, down, slide, down. Okay, now see, I didn't, my, it was hooked on my nut. And so therefore my, my stitches didn't catch so see that's a good demonstration there of how to mess it up okay so down to the side okay so those stitches you can tell maybe it looks a little bit chunkier than the ones leading, but I kind of prefer going to side to side. And when I punch, I will do both forward leading with the bevel, so leading with the bevel, or I will do it from the side, okay? So that's, that's how you punch. You might just practice in the margins of your piece just to kind of get the feel of it before you start punching the real thing, but um, that's how you do that. That's how you, that's the basic of punching. You can lead with the beveled edge or you can go from the side, either the left to the right, okay? So, when you approach a pattern, you want to do all of these single interior things first. So, when I would do this pattern, I would do the ABCs, I would do the the flower and the leaves. I would do the one, two, three, I would do the bird, and I would do the tongues down here, and then I would do the grass, okay? So let's do the ABCs, and I'll show you how we want to do that. So I'm going to lead with the beveled edge, okay? So I'm the, it's going to jump, jump, jump with the beveled edge, okay? I'm going to go down, 
I'm going to go up and I'm going to drag it down. And you want it really tight because it's just going to be a single line. And you want to go slow. I always have to go really slow when I start punching again because you kind of lose the, the rhythm of it. And you just want to go slow right up. The floss is coming out the back end. So you're leaving a trail with the floss coming out the back end. Okay, when you get to the top, okay, we're at the top. You turn your, your hoop, and then now we're going to lead with the beveled edge down to the bottom of the A, okay? Make sure your floss is, whoops, sorry. Make sure your floss is loose, okay? Down the other side. Close together because it's only going to be a single row. Go slow. Okay, and we got to the bottom of that. Now we're going to we're going to have to stop and I want to get my really sharp scissors. So I use these little snips. So again, I'm going to put my finger right there. I'm going to pull straight up, okay? And then I'm going to clip right there. Oh, sorry. And I'm going to clip right here, okay? Now I'm going to do the other, the A all the way across. Again, we're only going to leave about an inch or half an inch. We're going to go, I'm leading with the bevel, so I'm coming straight towards me. Down. Okay, now then, we're at the line that we've already, we've already punched. You're going to, <laughs> this is hard. We're going to hold the back side. We're going to pull straight up, jump it across, and then go down, okay? So we're just skipping right over that, holding it, and we won't clip it or anything. We're just going to let it go. When we get to the end of the A, Again, we're going to hold it with our fingernail, pull it straight up, and then clip it, okay? Now then, we're going to go ahead and clip this one. I'm going to have to redo this because I was at a weird angle and it didn't work good. Leading with the beveled edge. Okay, then we're at the end. I'm going to hold it, come straight up, and clip. Okay. Alright, so that's your first A. And you can look on the back side and see how it's, it really does look like an A because I did it very tight together and I, I put a lot of stitches in the A. And that's good. That's the way you want it, okay? Next one is we're going to go straight to the B. Okay? Any questions so far? Is everybody following me? I know that I'm... It's kind of a strange angle. I didn't think about my hands being in the way, and I apologize for that. Okay, get it on the top so you're not catching anything. Your hand's not resting on it. You're going to go down. Tight together. Go slow. Down, up, and drag. Down, up, drag. And I'm going to go around. So I'm going to... Turn my piece. Whenever you want to turn, don't turn your needle. You want to turn your hoop in the direction that you're going. Again, leading with the beveled edge. Close together. About at two to three threads is what you're... And you hear that noise? You want to hear the noise. Okay, I'm going to turn my, my 
hoop again. Okay, I'm to the end. I'm going to put my, my finger on the back, pull straight up, and then I'm going to clip. Okay, and then I also clip all these other little strings because if you catch them, they can pull out. So you want to just flush with the, with the paper, with the weaver's cloth. Now we're going to do C. Okay, we're done. So now we're going to put my finger back there, pull it straight up, and then clip it. Flush against the pattern, uh, the fabric. Okay, so we got ABC done, and that's what it looks like on the reverse. ABC. Looks really good, right? Okay, close together, looking awesome. Now we're going to do one, two, three. This is how come I like a, a clothespin, because I can just jerk it around and it unravels. I don't have to unravel it myself. Okay, we're going to do the one weeding with the beveled edge. Close together. Okay, I came to the end. I'm going to hold it, pull it straight up, clip and clip the end. Okay. We're going to go on to two. Moving as I go around that curve, you want to move your hoop and then your thread's going to get caught up so you want to be aware of your thread did that help any Maybe. Okay, it's done. So I'm going to put my finger there, pull straight up. I'm going to clip it, and I'm going to clip the other. Okay? And let's do the three. And I'm going to turn it down. When I get done, I'm going to hold it back at the edge here, pull it straight up, and then clip it. Clip it, and clip the other end. You always want to keep your back really neat, because the nicer your back is, the neater your front's going to be. Okay, so there's ABC123 on the, on the pretty side, alright? Okay, so now then, let's talk about homework. 
Homework is going to be, I want you to do the ABCs. I want you to do all these single things. So I want you to do the fence. I want you to do the flagpole. I want you to do the uh, flower or the stems and the leaves. Leave open the hill and the sky and we'll do the tree and the, I'll show you how to do the tree and, and the flag and all that next year. So our next week, because I'm thinking next week it's seven or eight next Friday is when we'll do the next one. Okay. So do all of your, if you, if you have this pattern, do the ABCs, one, two, threes, the leaves and the stem, do the crow, and then we'll talk about doing these filling in. Okay. Now then when we fill in, let's talk about filling in. Okay. So let's say that, uh, let's say that this is all going to be black okay so this is how you go about it you're going to outline it okay then you turn it you're going to come down this side you're outlining just like you're coloring a picture Am I in the shot? Mm -hmm. Turn. Okay, so we're back where we started, okay? All right, so now then, now what are we going to do? Well, you want to get it, punch it tight. And the reason you want to punch tight, is, for example, is on, on mine that I have right here, this is the pretty side. If you don't punch tight, you're going to see this, this weaver's cloth. Now, this isn't finished. I have to do the background. But if I didn't punch it tight... You would see the background cloth you don't want that you want to you don't want to see the background cloth and i can show you on ones that i have done let me see if i can show you a place on one that i've done where it's like whoops that wasn't any good um well i can't because i really punch tight <laughs> but if you don't punch tight you will see the background so what does that mean so that means you want to go just right next, okay, right next to where you punched before. You want to see just the scant bit of the fabric under, but beside, you know, in between the rows, just a very little bit, okay? And so you're just going to fill in just like this, all the way around, all the way around, on all sides, just fill in until you have that square filled okay now then let's say i don't want to go around and around say i want to go up and down well that's fine you can go up and down However you want to do it, just make sure that you're punching pretty close together so that you don't see any, any of the, the weaver's cloth on the other side, okay? That's how you can either go round and round and fill it in or you can go up and down, however you want to do it, just that's how you fill in. Now then, can any, is there any questions on that? Yes, yeah, so um, I think you've answered all the questions about punching and we went over how to fill so at the end of the fill you just would finish it like normal pull up and mm -hmm. yep you clip. just pull it out and clip it pull it up and clip it yes and then the next question is do you need to tighten your weaver's cloth after you have been punching for a while um you can you'll notice i'm sure you've noticed that you notice that i put my finger as i go i do that because i like i feel like it gives me 
um, gives the some extra tension to I, I just like to sit I just like to hold it down I just feel like it gives me more tension when I'm punching I don't you know that's not necessary you can punch like this but I feel like if I do that it just gives it a little extra tension to where it doesn't go up and down as much um, see like if I punch without doing it see how that moves the fabric and I feel like I don't have good gauge on how far away my stitches are but if I hold my finger right by it I feel like I can do it more I get a more consistent punch so I always hold my fingers put a little pressure there what would happen if your second row was too close to the first would it pull anything out it would you would notice it because first of all it would probably tear your um, your um, floss would get torn or you would see um, on the front you would see um, some of it would get uh, well, let me see. I can show you that. Sometimes when you get too close, uh, for instance, like right there, do you see that that black part is right in the white part? That's because I stitched, I punched that too close. Now then, do I, I need to take that out? No. Typically, if you take like a tweezers and you mess with it, it'll get that. It, you can tweeze that black out. See how I teased it out, and now it's not. It just kind of like will. Uh, tangle the the two loops together and but you can tease that out you don't need to you don't need to take that out if you feel like you know like you're punching and you think oh this row is crap well don't worry about it just yank it out that's all you have to i mean you don't have to you if you don't like this if you look at it on the front and you think boy that looks like crap just pull it out okay speaking of that if you've pulled it out too many times can you still use the same pattern you can use the same pattern you can see that there's holes here what i do is i get a little toothbrush and if you kind of go back and forth on that those will put because those weaver's cloth threads are not punctured they've just been moved aside by the by the and you can see by just going back and forth how that closed those holes up see that so no, you can use your you can use it as much as you want to use it. All right. All right. So if you start going around, do you have to do the same for the whole area, or does it matter? Matter, or can you do both? It, you can do both. You can do whatever you want to do when you fill. Okay. Let me get let me get something real quick here so I can show you on my uh, on my bird. Okay, so on my bird here, I'm going to move you up so you're not at a slant because that's driving me nuts. Okay, so on this bird here, you can see that I have, let's see, one, two, three, three different colors in the bird, right? Okay, so basically when I did this when I punched this, I followed Michelle Palmer's her name. I, I followed her directions and she kind of tells you where to place the colors, but you can do it at your discretion on how you want to fill in. So what I did is I would outline the areas in whatever color I wanted it and then I'd go through, I would go back and punch. Sometimes like on this one, I can tell because I went straight, 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 straight straight I did straight all the way over here now on these you can tell by the way that the nap is that I went around and I just went around and around and around you can just tell on how you do it right here you can see I did can you see how that's punched there you can tell that I went punch 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 and I punched this area so when I punch in my background I typically have areas where I put, I just outline and I fill and I fill and I fill. Some people will start and they'll punch down here and they'll do this background all the way, one single thing all the way around the background and just keep on doing it until it's filled. I typically don't do that. I usually will say, for instance, I'll punch the background from this leg to this needle like this and I'll punch it around and around and around till that's filled. Then I'll go to this and punch it around and around and around to that field. Um, on our pattern that we're if you're doing the american roots you will see that she has this movement see how she has movement in her background that's because she went 
around she did like right down there she did all that one color and then she did a couple of rows of the next color and she high that makes it kind of look highlighted and so you can play with the pattern can you see that how that's kind of on look on your pattern you can see like okay so in the grass see how she did the grass she did dark and light and she just went around with some dark did a couple laps with dark then did a couple laps with light however you want to do it it's how it, this is so free form people you can do it however you want to do it that's why i really like punch needle because it's it's not like fast 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 like i could get this whole thing done tonight but you could get a punch needle size project this size done in two or three days probably if you did solid punching in the evenings so in short do you have to outline it and then just go row by row by row? No. You can block off however you want it to do it. If you're doing two different colors, then that way, if you do like rows or sections, it gives the area some movement. Now on my, let me get this other one here. If you're using Valdani thread or a Gast or Classic Color Works, those are dyed threads. So you're going to get that movement just by punching, no matter how you punch, because the thread is variegated. So on this, I just kind of punched however. I basically started at the bottom, and you, I can tell because I kind of got stripey. And I just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth is how I did it. So it's basically how, it's like coloring. That's really what you're doing. You're coloring with floss. And however you colored, when you colored when you were a kid, you that's how you can punch. However, the main thing is your gauge. So how tightly you're, you're punching, that's the key. Because if you don't punch tightly, let me see if I can find an area in here that's not punched good. You will see the bottom of your your weaver's cloth and you don't want that I can't find anything because I just punched that tight but some of the first things that I punched like years ago you can see the bottom of the weaver's cloth and that's just not as good is there any other questions yeah so another question is where did could you um, go over again where you bought your mighty winder at the shepherd's needle okay and then there was another question earlier um, that asked they were having problems with their needle coming out completely and I guess it was not punching with the thread so does that mean it wasn't she you got it either hooked on something or you have the right the wrong size a needle in if you're hook if you're punching with six strands you want to punch with the medium needle if that's not holding the loops in on the fabric go up a, a size and that should and see how that works or you had it caught on your hand or you had it caught on your screw or you had your hand on it or sometimes I'll be punching and I'll think why in the heck is my needle my loops not doing it and I'm holding the floss back here so you've got to just really be very aware that your floss is o always very you know loose not, not you don't have your hand on it you're not holding it like this it's not you know hooked on your screw whatever you just have to be very aware of that when you're punching and if your loops aren't staying in the fabric that means one of the, either you got a too small of a needle or you have got it caught on the on the side of the even just getting it caught on the side of the 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 weaver's cloth will cause the loops not to hold okay anything else you have to glue your ends after you cut them no no the weaver's cloth is so tight that it will you do not have to glue you do not have to glue them as long as you don't go up and like pick on it it won't it won't have a problem when we finish this because we'll go all the way through the end and we'll finish this and I will finish it into something you don't have to even put glue on the back of that when you're finishing anything either no the weaver's cloth will hold it so that's all of the questions that we've had tonight so we'll that wrap it? it up okay so what we'll do then people is if you can get most of these inner por portions done I showed you how to fill in um, I have another punch needle video, but it doesn't probably show much of fill in on the first one. But um, if you would get the ABCs, the one, two, threes, 
the crow, the flowers, and then we'll do a lot of the fill in and how I go, how I approach that next week. So I have to check my schedule, but I think next week we'll probably be doing it the same around the same time on Friday night. So uh, look for an announcement on that on my Instagram. Please like and subscribe. This is a free class. I don't get anything out of this except your friendship. And I appreciate your friendship and your fellowship and your likes and subscribes. So if you could please like and subscribe. Tell your friends if they're wanting to learn how to do punch needle that I'm doing this series. Um, this will be uploaded as soon as we get done. We'll have this uploaded and recorded and put it up on my channel. So I sure do appreciate it anymore. Any more? One last question. Mm -hmm. Where did you purchase your scissors? On Amazon. They are, um, if you go look on Amazon, put in the, I think I have it maybe linked on my blog, but if you put in Amazon, uh, surgical snips, you can find these. There's three of them for $20. And then as far as trimming the end, the mm -hmm. end in the front, Mm -hmm. Do you ever need to do that or is that um, we, something we'll do in the future? We, that is something that we'll do in the future. As long as they're all the same size, which you can see mine's all the same size. There's nothing randomly going awry here. Um, we will not cut those. We will, we will clean that up at the end and I will tell you how to do that. Now then, I do want to point something out to you though here. Um, can you see there on my B and my C that I have like some some little holes there. I didn't, my gauge wasn't good there. And probably because I'm doing this live and it's about 50 feet away from me to punch and at a wrong angle. But if you, if you have something like this where the B is kind of spacey here, pull that out and go back in and do that again. Okay. You want it very close. The A was done perfectly. You want it to look like the A. Okay. All right. Anything else? Kits were bought from Shepherd's um, needle. Shepherd's the Shepherd's Needle in Little Rock, Arkansas. She, her, um, the Threads That Bind designer knew that I was doing this and, and Anne is in talk, has been in talk and contact with her. So Anne has been getting this because she's very close to Little Rock, this designer. And um, so Anne has been working with her and she has the pattern. She has everything. Everything that I talked about tonight, I got from Anne. The supplies are all listed on your blog, correct? Yes. Uh, the twisted stitcher dot blogspot dot com underneath the tab punch needle and then blending and everything else will come in the future in the future all we're doing right now is doing the single I want you to do the fence I want you to do the flower stem the ABCs the one two three and I want you to do the crow and next week we will talk about how we're going to get movement and blending in our in our piece and filling in on the hills Anything else? Nope. All right, people, thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a great evening. Thanks again so much for joining me. Like and subscribe, and, I'll, and look on my Instagram for the announcement for next video or next class. All right? Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.